In this video, I'm going to review the LG B8, the entry-level 2018 OLED TV from the South Korean brand. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Teo. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. And what we have here is the 65-inch LG B8 model number OLED 65B8PLA, which is the UK 3-pin plug version. While the step-up C8 E8, G8, and W8 series feature the company's new top-end Alpha 9 processor, the B8 uses an Alpha 7 processor, which is essentially a modified version of the SoC found on last year's B7, C7, E7, G7, and W7. Indeed, once we went into the service menu of our OLED 65B8 review sample, we discovered that the chip type is labeled as M16PP, which has a very similar code name to last year's M16P. Even the design is almost identical to 2017's LG C7, with a slim black bezel, a central sloped stand bearing an LG OLED inscription, just so you can be absolutely 100% sure that you bought an OLED, not a QLED. The connections are located at the left rear of the display, including four HDMI inputs, all of which are full-fat HDMI 2.0b ports with HDCP 2.2 compliance, so you can plug your Xbox One X, PS4 Pro, Apple TV 4K box, and 4K Blu-ray player to any of these four HDMI connections and enjoy 4K HDR content at higher frame rate, chroma or bit depth without any issues. Before I move on to talk about picture quality, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to thank our sponsor for this video. In case you're new to this channel, Krempner Moore is an electrical retailer based in the UK I've enjoyed working with over the past few years. Sometimes they loan me TVs to review, TVs that maybe some manufacturers are reluctant to send to me for in-depth testing. Lately, Krempner Moore has been generous enough to sponsor many videos on this very channel, making it possible for me to produce quality content for you. So if you are considering buying a new television, even if it's not this LG B8, please support this channel by considering buying from Crampton Mall. Call 0113-244-6607 and ask for David Corner, and he'll take care of you with great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Our 65-inch B8 uses the latest WRGB OLED panel from LG Display, as you can see from this macro photo of the subpixel configuration here, where some of the subpixels are notched. Based on the 2017 and 2018 OLEDs we have reviewed and calibrated so far, 2018 OLED panels generally have slightly better uniformity than 2017 panels. When asked to display brighter full-field grey slides, our OLED 65B8 review unit didn't exhibit any color tinting, banding, or dirty screen effect, which means you can watch football or ice hockey without seeing screen uniformity issues that may spoil your viewing experience. In very dark scenes, no consumer OLED TV is free of thin vertical streaks, but our LG B8 review sample is one of the cleanest we've seen in this regard, we barely noticed any vertical bending in the movie Arrival, which is very challenging for OLED because the whole movie is quite dark and many scenes contain elements just above black. Otherwise, because every OLED pixel can be turned on and off independently of each other, the display technology is self-emissive after all. The LG B8 is capable of delivering true blacks, vibrant colors, and wide viewing angles. A quick word about the 3D LUT AutoCal feature. Yes, I was extremely excited about its potential at CES earlier this year, but after in-depth testing, I'm still hesitant about using it when calibrating for my customers because of a couple of reasons. First, after 3D LUT auto calibration on 2018 LG OLEDs including the B8, some important picture settings such as color gamut, gamma, and white balance are locked and there is currently no way to save these settings in such a way that my customers can restore the calibrated settings themselves in the unlikely event of a factory reset. Second, although LG Electronics and portrait displays have worked hard to improve things, tonal gradation is still worse after 3D LUT AutoCal. Some other calibrators claim their lightning LUT, which 
measures only 101 color points and interpolate the rest, can be used safely without introducing issues, but I'm still not 100% happy with the results at the time I filmed this video in August 2018. Here, I have calibrated ISF Expert Dark Room Mode manually using my normal method, while ISF Expert Bright Room Mode was calibrated using Lightning LUT AutoCal. This is a color ramp pattern from TED's calibration disk. I'll leave a link to this excellent test disk in the YouTube description below. I'm not sure how YouTube's compression will affect what you see in this video, but as I toggle between ISF Expert Dark Room and ISF Expert Bright Room modes, I could see that in the ISF Expert Bright Room mode, which by the way has been calibrated using Lightning LUT AutoCal, the color transition from one tone to another is more stair-stepped and less smooth. Is this visible in real-life content? Yes, especially in less than pristine sources, because the coarser gradation would exaggerate the compression artifacts you see on screen. Here is a dark scene from Father Brown which is broadcast in 1080i from ITV HD. In the ISF Expert Darkroom mode, which has been calibrated manually, the LG B8 does a decent job of suppressing compression artifacts to an acceptable level. But if we switch to ISF Expert Bright Room mode, which has been auto-caled using Lightning LUT, the near-black posterization becomes much more obvious, resulting in a noisier picture. It is for this reason that I am still calibrating 2018 LG OLEDs manually for my customers because that's the only way I can be sure I'm achieving the cleanest picture possible together with accurate colors. On this challenging Color Checker SG chart where 140 color patches are measured, average delta error or DE on our LG B8 review unit was only 1.14 after manual calibration well below the humanly visible threshold of Delta Error 3, which means memory colors including skin tones will look extremely natural and realistic. Next, let's talk about motion. Like other 2018 OLEDs from LG Electronics, the B8 offers BFI or black frame insertion. Now, when I reviewed the C8 a few months ago, I pointed out that some frame interpolation is still being applied with BFI engaged. This appears to have been fixed or reduced on the B8, judging from our interpolation detector pattern. Maybe it's the different chipset, maybe it's the firmware. However, I don't think many viewers will be able to tolerate black frame insertion on current OLED TVs, mainly because of flicker, particularly in brighter scenes with 50Hz broadcast content we get in the UK and Europe. I mean, I'm one of the biggest advocate of black frame insertion out there, but there's no way I can sit through an entire football match or an entire tennis match with BFI enabled on an OLED TV regardless of whether it's from LG, it's from Panasonic or it's from Sony. The flicker just gets too tiring after a while, even if motion blur is reduced. On the video processing front, the LG B8 doesn't seem to have the decontouring filter implemented on LG OLEDs with Alpha 9 processor, such as the C8, E8, G8, and W8, probably because the B8 is only using an Alpha 7 chipset. Now, if you have watched my review of the LG C8, you may remember that LG has put its decontouring filter under the MPEG noise reduction control, but on the B8, engaging MPEG noise reduction had no effect on smoothing out the posterization in this scene from the Martian. Because I am a purist, I prefer not to enable MPEG noise reduction on LG 2018 OLEDs since it also scrubs away some fine detail. But if you like smoother gradation and cleaner near blacks at the expense of losing some fine detail, just be aware that the decontouring filter is available on the C8 but not on the B8. When it comes to HDR, peak brightness on our LG 65B8 review sample measured 670 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 135 nits full fill. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage was 99% as we had come to expect from WRGB OLED panels over the past couple of years. 
One interesting finding we found on the B8 was that LG seemed to have changed its tone mapping algorithm to respond to MAX-CLL instead of MAX-MDL metadata. You're probably confused now, so let me explain. MDL and MAX-CLL are static metadata that are embedded into HDR content as outlined in SMPTE's ST2086 document. MDL stands for Mastering Display Luminance, and on 4K Blu-rays, the maximum MDL is generally set at either 1000 nits or 4000 nits. 1000 nits if the HDR movie is mastered on a Sony BVM X300 RGB OLED monitor, 4000 nits if it's mastered on a Dolby Pulsar. Max CLL, on the other hand, stands for maximum content light level, representing the brightest pixel in the movie. For as far as I could remember, LG OLEDs have always responded to MDL in that they adapt their tone curve based on the maximum mastering display luminance metadata. But this approach can be problematic because some titles that send a maximum mastering display luminance metadata of 4000 nits, perhaps they are mastered on the Dolby Pulsar, actually only contain a much lower max CLL in that the brightest pixel element doesn't come anywhere close to 4000 nits. The most drastic example I always use is the 4K Blu-ray of Goodfellas. It has a max MDL of 4000 nits, but a max CLL of only 247 nits. So if an OLED TV only responds to max MDL, it will try to adapt its tone curve to try and tone map 4000 nits to an OLED's peak brightness of let's say 600 or 700 nits, when there's absolutely no need to do that at all, since the brightest pixel only goes up to 247 nits. In other words, responding to a max CLL is a much more sensible approach for tone mapping. Panasonic has been using this method on their OLEDs, and I'm happy to see LG start using it too. This brings us to tone mapping for HDR games, which is even trickier because some games contain metadata that goes all the way up to 10,000 nits. But before I show you the difference between the LG B8 and last year's B7 in HDR game mode, here are the input lag times for the B8. 21 milliseconds in both 1080p SDR and 4K HDR game modes, making it one of the most responsive TVs for playing games on the market right now. Ok, the LG B7 versus the B8. Here are the respective PQ EOTF tracking curve when fed a 10,000 nit metadata. As you can see, the B8 tracks the yellow line for as long as possible, is even slightly brighter, up to around 300 nits before rolling off to retain more specular highlight detail. But on the B7, the entire tone curve is depressed across the board, causing the whole picture to look too dark. So at baseline, the 2018 LG OLEDs will already look brighter than 2017 OLEDs for HDR games. But on top of that, the 2018 models, including the B8, also offer dynamic tone mapping in game mode that can brighten 10,000 nit games even further. Before I end this video, I want to talk about the risk of burning on OLED TVs because I know some of you will bring up this topic in the YouTube comments section below. From my experience calibrating, testing, and using hundreds of OLED TVs over time, and from talking with other experienced technical reviewers and calibrators who own and use or even abuse their OLED TVs day in, day out, burn in or permanent screen burn is a non issue. Modern OLED TVs run their own compensation cycle in standby to clear up image retention and are much more resistant than plasmas or CRTs in this aspect. If you vary your content, by that I mean let's say you watch your movies with black bars for 2 hours, you watch news with channel logos for 3 hours, play games with static HUD for 4 to 5 hours, then you don't need to worry about burning. However, if you watch the same news channel with a bright red logo, for example from the BBC or CNN, for 20 hours a day, then of course you are going to accelerate the aging of red subpixel much faster, increasing the risk of permanent screen burn, in which case you may be better off buying an LED LCD. Now, I'm in the process of designing my own burn-in test on 2018 OLEDs that reflects real-world usage, but I'm stuck at a stage where I need to find source devices that can switch on and off automatically at certain times. So if you know of a source device, either a Blu-ray player, 
Freeview Recorder satellite box that can turn itself on and off at set times or if you have any suggestions so someone doesn't need to be in front of the OLED to turn it on and off manually for this burn-in test, please let me know in the YouTube section below. To sum up, the LG B8 offers some extra features over last year's B7 such as black frame insertion and 3D LUT AutoCAL. But in my opinion, the number one reason to buy the 2018 model over the 2017 one is for the increased luminance output in HDR game mode thanks to better PQ EOTF tracking and dynamic tone mapping, thus bringing more impact and enjoyment to HDR games from your Xbox One X or PS4 Pro console. The pricing situation is a bit strange. At one point, you can actually buy the Step Up C8 cheaper than this B8 because of World Cup cashback promotion. But at £2,800 for a 65-inch model, the LG B8 still delivers excellent value for money, especially with full Dolby Vision support out of the box. And so, it receives our highly recommended Best Value Award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.